All right, so my name is Darian. This is Alec. Hey, what's up, guys? And Joey. Hello! And today, we're going to be talking about music topics. This is the Simple Stride podcast that we got going on here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just close your ear. That works, I guess. <laughs> That's good. It's good, it's good, it's good. All right. All right, so what is our first topic? So pretty much I'm going to ask you a question, Darian. Because I've, I've picked this question out already that I've, I've wanted you to um, like That's see. Right. And uh, you didn't tell me about this ahead of time? Yeah, because then you would know what the question is and you'd prepare for it. So. This is true. They, yeah. you got to put me... Put so you're going to be that friend, you got to put me on the spot. Yes, I am. I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> All right. Here's a question. Uh, what connection, if any, do you think there is between drugs and music? Ooh. That would have been the last question I ever thought of. Yeah. It's a good starter, too. It is a good starter. So, to be honest, I feel like in a lot of music, um, there's not so much a connection to drugs within music, other than in rap. Obviously, they talk about smoking dope and all those other things all the time. Like, that's like... I don't even, I don't even know, like every other song that I listen to, I swear, that's a rap song, has those in it. So, obviously there's a connection there, because everybody, for some reason, puts, I shouldn't say everybody, everybody that I see connects money with drugs. And you see this all the time in celebrities. Um, I mean, heck, Justin Bieber's a good idea of it, like... Justin Bieber's he, been, like, thrown in jail multiple and times like, because of it. It's just dumb. Demi Lovato. And so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, even the best of us manage to fall into the same stupor when it comes to these things. But it's it's not so much the music that's connected to it. It's the money around the music that gets connected to it. Um, and then a lot of things like raves... There's always drugs at raves. Raves have oh, lots course. and lots of drugs because everybody's on LSD. They're all smoking pot. They're all doing things that mess with their mind that enhance the experience that they have. And so you end up with a generation, the generation right above ours, somebody who's between like 25 and 40, that those people, um, I guess I shouldn't say like 25. I, I should say closer to like 35 to 40, that area. Um, and above that, a lot of them Pretty attached hard. the dubstep and rap music to drugs. When really it's the opposite way around, you're attaching the drugs to that music. Because when there are places like that, they enjoy going to places like that. Not because they want to see that music with that trip, but they want something to do while they trip. They're going to trip regardless. But they make it a special occasion when you go to see like a rave or dubstep music in person or to go smoke some pot while listening to a rapper or something like that, like a Tech Nine. I went to Colorado last summer and saw Tech Nine in concert. Um, and him, Murs, uh, Chris, all of them were sitting there rapping and I got handed something like 20 or 30 blunts. Holy in shit. less than an hour. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> so, and like you look around and everybody's drunk or everybody's high. I mean, they're all having a good time. It's all fun and games. I watched one lady like trip up the stairs in the same spot about 80 times. It was <laughs> hilarious. She was just drunk off her mind. But, I mean, and they're all friendly. It's like a thing where like when you first show up, everybody's kind of secluded. They're all kind of by themselves. And then the music starts and everybody's like sitting there and you like get chants and stuff going where like there's a spot where Chris, where or not Chris but um, Mers in his song um, Two Step I believe it's what it's called. Uh, there's the scene where he's going. There's I got two shots left in my 22, and then the crowd yells back Two Step. Is it? And so he like says it's this at the beginning, and I got really confused. He's like, All right, when I say I got two shots left in my 22, you say Two Step. And he's like, I got two shots left in my 22. Two Step. Two shots left in my 22. Two Step. And then it like stopped and it went away for the like the remainder of most of the songs. So, like it played, he starts the song, and about a minute and a half into it is the first time you hear that. And the music kind of dies down a little bit. And he's like, I got two shots left in my 22. And the whole arena erupted 
with Two Step. And this is a big place with lots of people. This is at Red Rocks, which is huge for around our area. And the whole crowd just screamed Two Step. And it like scared me. I was like, whoa. I thought all these people were too high to even understand what was happening at this point. <laughs> and it was like they were all like connecting. And it was actually kind of cool to see how that drug enabled them to be closer together. They all just vegged out together and were homies, basically. Even though there were some of them that were like, looked like they should be in a gang. There were some that looked like they were homeless. Other ones looked like they were just lived at a trap house. Um, and then there was the few like me that look like they belong in something not drug related. And everybody was just friendly with everyone and it was awesome, it was so much fun. It's um, like when you and me went to a warp tour. Exactly. You get all these people that are from totally different places. Like you got your heavy rock fans, you got your metal fans, your country. Everybody's here to enjoy this. And even though you might be some person who's like a millionaire sitting there making bank, $100,000 a year kind of job, you're there to have fun and you're in the crowd with all these other people who are either living off of, um, uh, what's it called? Um, food stamps. Yeah, food stamps and stuff. And people who are, like, in my generation, my, my area of earnings where I make, like, 30 grand a year at the most, and then you have your people making 100000 and all of you just get along. It's just a big mash of people having fun. And everybody enjoys it. It's a blast. I mean, I will say that... Um, Going to Denver to see that it was awesome and it was fun to go to um, Warp Tour, but it wasn't as big as I thought it was going to be. It wasn't as massive. It was huge. I mean, I lie, there was a lot of artists. There was a lot of fun. There was tons of people, especially after that one band got done and like we were trying to walk back through and the other crowd was moving towards <laughs> us. And it was like this big, huge section of like, it was nearly so it impossible was like, yeah, to get through. It was like stupid anywhere. trying to get through that. You had to surf your whole way section. out. Yeah, basically. And so it was like, but the people, they weren't as friendly. And I kind of noticed that. The, the people who were on drugs seemed to be more friendly than the people who weren't on drugs. And I feel like that's because when you're on drugs, you let your guard down more and you're more open with people. You're very much uh, easier to persuade, easier because you're just happy to be there at that point. Um, whereas when you're just yourself, you're kind of secluded, you're kind of, oh, I don't know if I should do that. Like when I was sitting there and we were getting ready to crowd surf, I wasn't sure if I wanted to until I was up there. Once I was up there, I was fine. And I was like, oh my God, I have to do this again. Cause I put you up yeah, there. Yeah. You like shoved me up there like, hey, tap on this guy's yeah, shoulder. Let's get him up there. Get him he was up like, there. all right. Like grabs me. I'm like, oh, I am up. Okay. Heads, heads. <laughs> Falls on the crowd. And so, like, before that, I wasn't really ready to go do it, things like that. I wasn't open to that. The next place I go to, that's, like, the first thing. I'm just going to sprint into the ground and just dive on top of people. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, and then they all run away and you got concrete. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, I just get concrete. But um, it's, it's like a thing where you end up with different societies. And these people, like, a lot of them that you see at concerts that they all get high and they all do drugs and stuff... They're people that that's when they're in their best time. That's when they enjoy their lives the most because that's what they do. They just, they, they work, they eat, they sleep just so that they can afford to do their drugs. That's their daily kick. That's like, instead of me, I sit here, I like to work on my vehicles. I like to own nice things. I like to, to run over here and I like to, to do music and I like to do things like that. They would rather sit on the couch and smoke pot. And that's, that's their thing. If they want to do that, that's perfectly fine. I don't have anything against that whatsoever. It's just not what I'm up to, but it's still not a bad thing to do. And I say this very lightly. It needs to be done in moderation. Everybody's moderation goes. is different. Everything needs to be in moderation. Take like part this, of drinking. doing this until it becomes a job. We need to do this in moderation. We need to have our music thing in moderation. Whereas a job is a thing you have to do every day. You don't want, and an obsession, an obsession is something that's unhealthy. That is controlling your life. An and same with an addiction. They are something that, like, <clears throat> weed can become an addiction. Working on your cars can come become an addiction. Like, it can be. Like, you can get addicted to doing things like this. Like, even what I do in my daily life where I can get addicted to writing music. 
And I was. I mean, like, I still am. That's, that's not a bad thing in some mm-hmm. cases, but anything in moderation is okay. So Oops. it's it's just a, a matter of opinion and looking at them the way they act when they're like that. Obviously, it's their lifestyle. That's how they are. And it's something that obviously they do in moderation because of the fact that when they're like that, they're not just, they, they aren't just constantly high because when they show up, they're not high. Some of them, yes, were very high and they were very drunk. And those are the people that don't do it in moderation. Those are the people that they get turned around at the gate because they're too wasted to get in. <laughs> and so you've got those people and then you've got the people that do it in moderation that were having fun. They were enjoying it. They were there with friends. They were there with the people around them. They would smoke each other up. That was their, their communication rather than to them walking up, hey, my name is Darian. Uh, do you want to sit together kind of thing? It was, hey, you want to take a hit? They take a That's hit. Exactly you start what to me. It's an awesome little thing to kind of communicate. It's it's your own type of communication. Whereas like instead of using your phone, you're actually talking to people. So even though it's not something I would like to do a lot personally, if it meant that I was going to have a new friend, that I was going to have somebody that I could communicate with, yeah, I would totally take a rip off a blunt if it meant that I was going to get to have a conversation with somebody new and if it was going to make them open up. It, it's something that it's the same thing as accepting a handshake. Just obviously it's a drug. <laughs> so, That's one hell of a handshake. I mean, yeah, it's, it's still a handshake and it's still a way that they communicate. It's a way that they know to communicate so that is their lifestyle. And, and that is perfectly fine. It could be worse. I mean, that handshake could be, could be meth. Yeah, it could be meth or heroin. cocaine or something like that. Yeah. I mean... But you said you're addicted to writing music. I don't think that's true. An addiction is, is something, anything, that can then negatively impact well, it your did daily life. For a while. Mm-hmm. When I was first writing music and first getting into all of this. That um, is all you did. There was no job. There was no nothing. You just tried. It was 24-7 music. Mm-hmm. And I lost sleep. I was up until 5 o'clock a.m. every single day. Um, trying to produce, produce, produce. Okay. And, and that was better. me with gaming. I sat there and I would be up until about 5 o'clock in the morning playing video games and then I'd pass out and I would sleep for 12 hours and I'd get up and do the same thing the next day. And I would play, I'd play like Destiny for like 14 hours straight. Like, Jesus. That's ridiculous. Like, that's an addiction to I, video I games. I hit 12 I, at one point. The most I ever played was I played Minecraft for seven and a half days straight. Mm-hmm. Did not sleep, did not stop. The only thing I did was I used the restroom and I got up to get food and to get another monster. That's the only thing I did for seven and a half days. Hey, at least you didn't have a pisser next to you. <laughs> That's when you need to start worrying. That's yeah, it. when you piss into the bag next to you because you don't really start. <laughs> yeah. I used to have a big issue with that with movies. Like I hoard, I hoard movies. I have upwards of, I think in my lifetime I've had upwards of a thousand plus DVDs and I'm about to be 22 mm-hmm. and that's crazy I have like ridiculous. 20 DVDs and well at at, at one, once upon a time I could I could binge watch Harry Potter everything all the Marvel movies uh, Star Wars all at once I could sit in front I could sit and watch Netflix I could binge watch uh, I mean like, if I get into a TV show Oh yeah! If you start a TV show, I'll be uh, my, watching my that favorite, TV show for three days. My favorite straight. show, my favorite show is NCIS. My favorite like crime drama. Really? Do the same. NCIS. I can sit, I can sit and watch NCIS from season one, watch it all the way through. See, and that's not really an addiction. To season thirteen. That's an obsession. Well, I would consider that one an obsession. See, it's, it's not, not really negatively impacting your life on a day to day basis. That's something that as soon as you do it, you can't stop yourself. Yes, but at one at one at one point it was. At one point, I started skipping classes in college. To to go just watch just to yeah. well, just to stay <laughs> stay in my dorm room and and watch, and watch Netflix, Netflix. <laughs> right? And, and I did that. I did that, and it was a it was a rough time in my life with the now ex girlfriend. But we would just stay in, skip classes, and just watch whatever mm-hmm. for literally all day. All right, Joe, I got a question for you. What's up? Um, do you prefer to listen to music on your own or listen to the music on the radio? And uh, how is the experience different in each case? Uh, I do prefer... I don't prefer the radio. Um, you mean on your own as in like... Just with on phones on my phone? Yeah, pretty much. I do prefer that. The radio, it's... It's on repeat. 
Right, and yeah, I'll listen to songs on repeat all the time. It's it's nice to get on the radio to hear something new. <laughs> well, you yes. and I, dude, but Darren, we'll we'll listen to uh, like one song <laughs> on repeat for twenty four hours. <laughs> I, I'll do that. That's <laughs> because um, it's a song that we love. It's not something that's just on the radio that's gonna come on in the next six hours again exactly. that you don't like. Mm-hmm. Exactly, they'll play a song every hour. They'll play the same playlist every hour, mm-hmm. right? And yep. yeah, I'll do that too, but. My it's playlist, a playlist that you like. My it's playlist your isn't. Songs. My playlist isn't fifteen songs, and three good ones. <laughs> exactly. Right? Yeah. My my playlist is is fifty songs, and you like. I, I, I love I love every single one of them, and depending yeah. on my mood, I listen to you know thirty or forty of them. Man, only fifty. I got two hundred. <laughs> but I have that. Those like are just my playlists. favorite songs ever. I, playlist. What I do is I I listen to um, a set of songs like. Uh, you know, 15 to 20 songs um, and I'll keep that about a week and then I'll delete that whole playlist and shuffle through my entire song list and whatever comes up and I like I'll uh, save it and then I'll have that on my playlist and I'll keep save 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 until about 15 to 20 I'll listen to those for a week and I'll just repeat the process see what I do is I sit here and I save every song that I find that I like on Spotify even though if it's something that I might not like every day and I memorize I have my entire uh, Spotify memorized okay. the whole thing through every song. It's not like something that I can name where the song is and how many it's in or what it's after or anything like that. It's something that I have a feeling and I can remember what's coming next. Not the name of it or anything like that, but it's like I know right now that Megalodonia is right before um, the new one that Trey showed me, which I can't remember what it's called. Um, which one? Let me look it up. I can't remember. It's it's an artist that I haven't heard very often, but it's. It's right here. I'll While you're finding it, I have a follow-up question for yours, for your question. Um, so when you're like gaming, or or I guess for both of you, when you guys are gaming, what type of music do you guys like to listen to? Honestly, it depends on the game. True. In most cases, I listen to something rock, something badass that makes me feel in control. I like dubstep. So yeah, when I'm like well, killing see, people on Call of Duty, I'll do dubstep. But if I'm if I'm playing like Minecraft or some like low paced single player game, I'll listen to something smooth and relaxing. I got perfect examples of both of those real fast. So okay. right here I've got Megalovonia and then it's all washed out by Dreamers. That's the next one that I have. Um, Megalodonia by Toby Fox, the Undertale string uh, soundtrack. So they're right in order. I remember that this goes, right? And immediately after that, this part. See, I listen, like I listen to okay. whenever I'm gaming. It depends on my mood, but if I'm like, it, it doesn't matter. I'll usually listen to something slower. Like when I'm playing like Call of Duty, um, I'll actually listen to um, usually uh, uh, Chain Smokers or. Um, Classic. Uh, let's see here. What else? Um, Quinn XCII. Um, I only have one song by, by uh, him, but uh, things like that. Um, uh, Echo Smith. Um, but when I'm playing like Destiny, I'll, I will listen to something a little a little more hard. Like I'll listen to some Fall Out Boy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, something a little bit more. I have, I have some dubstep that I listen to. Um, actually, Fall Out Boy's is... Like, uh, like my songs know what you... Did in the yeah, but they have one. they have a new album out that's um I love it. It's uh I forget what it's Mania. called. Yeah, the Mania. new album Mania. Um, Mania. I was listening. Awesome. I was listening listening to on uh, their uh, stuff on YouTube. Actually, I found one of their videos weird as hell. It's um. It, it, I know which one you're talking about. I can't. It's like called. um, but like I mean nothing nothing sh- says badass gaming music by like something that's like my songs know what you oh, did yeah. in the yes. dark. Oh, yeah. So light him up, uh, nothing hits Fall harder boy. than that. I mean, Fall, that's Fall Out Boy, I don't think you can get any better with that. Uh, honestly, Fall Out Boy is probably my favorite. When, when I'm gaming, Fall Out Boy, I, will listen, I can listen to like all, yeah, all like of their all songs. Of them, the whole way through, on repeat. All, but and, like, I mean, sometimes you gotta do a little bit of change. So like, if I'm playing okay. a racing game or something like that, I'll listen to something more like this. I, it's Adrenaline by uh, Nine Lashes. Which is that's just classic super racing music. Super hardcore racing music. Hard this is so classic. like 
classic race. This, this, this totally feels Agreed. like something that belongs Same. in like Need for Speed or something. And then the Need next for one, Speed probably has that song. Probably. One of their and then the things. next one, this is something that like I feel like if they ever changed the music to Minecraft and wanted to use somebody's song, they would use this song. This is Flight Four Five Five Five, uh, Indigafos Three Point Oh by Dylan Francis. Is it just a slow? Or does yep, it... this is the whole thing. I mean, if you if you fast forward it, this is definitely Minecraft. But, but you know what's interesting? Feels to me? just I like Minecraft with dubstep. You know what's very interesting <laughs> to me? So yeah, I like uh, what pumps me up the most is yeah, of course your generic upbeat, high yeah. tempo songs. But when I'm in the gym, you know, you want something soulful. Uh, yeah, something exactly. With meaning That's, something that gives you. I'll listen to Sam Smith and I'll hit the gym hard. Yeah, exactly. It's something that oh, yeah. your soul vibes with, something that gives you meaning. Something that's gonna drive you forward. Mm -hmm. Ed Sheeran, Shape of You. Yes. I love Ed Sheeran. That's my favorite. Too. Um, Ed Sheeran, uh, uh, Chainsmokers, Echo Smith, try listening to them. Their yeah. stuff. Echo uh, Smith has some higher tempo stuff, but it's still. Um, it's not like rock tempo. It's like yeah. It's 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 just below rock. It's a it's very still, airy pop. It, it's sound. almost it's almost like at the same tempo as like most dubstep music, um, but it's like you said, it's yeah. more like Gantu. You've both heard Cool Kids. Yeah, that's one of those slower ones. Um, yeah. Who hasn't? Get it get into my car. That's a good one. Um, I think I've heard that one too. Not very. That's much one of their mo more popular newer ones. Mm. Um, let's see here. Uh, uh, come together. Let's love. Let's love was at forties. Um, it never. It didn't leave the top five for like eighteen weeks straight. I mean, Chain I smokers. Uh, closer didn't leave. It, it didn't leave number one for like twelve weeks. Um, chain and smokers. Like, roses. A lot of good. I love roses and Paris. Paris. Paris I need to download Paris. Paris, Paris is awesome. Paris is oh, I like, haven't heard Paris. Ooh, you haven't heard Paris? No. Oh my gosh. No, we're showing you Paris. All right. So we're about to listen to Paris Chain Smokers. Um, yeah. The song is Paris. What's the album? I, Paris. I think it's is just the album. Is it just a single? Yeah. And it's got the beat and it's got the lyrics and everything. Oh, yes, I love this song. I, I was gonna say, I know I played this song for you. At some point, I know I played this song for you. Yeah, I, I should I, do a song on repeat. I only, I only need to do a cover of that. You know, that would be actually really cool to do a, do a cover, cover of that. Paris. I want to do a Jundra Swap cover of I Echoes still can't stuff. believe that you don't like um, that. Uh, what was it, Angel Smith or something that I was trying I to show you? The Cosmic Angel. Cosmic Bye. Angel. I cannot. No. Did you listen to the right one? Yes. This this just hits my soul. I love this song, dude. It seems so. I know, no offense to, to them, but it seems just generic. It does. It feels really generic. It feels and like the vocals don't pop out at me at all. It's like taking the. She's my god and I'm her love. Like I don't. I, oh, I don't. That voice. No offense. Drives me nuts. Not. I don't like it. It's like, it's like taking. So smiley, it's like yeah. taking what makes like, chain smokers good and, and making it country. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's almost it's like. like it's kind of like you tried to like throw a country voice into uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, their main singer. I it's guess that's what I do like all he, the It's time. like he plugged his nose <laughs> so. and started singing. Like, and then she's changing all yeah. my love. <laughs> See, like, come on. No. I also like, I also like, <laughs> weird, I also like listen to weird stuff. Like, uh, you got, you got USS. Um, we were listening to, to them Ooh, a bunch. I and, um, uh, uh, Car uh, Car uh, Caravan Palace. Caravan Palace is Caravan good. Palace. Caravan um, Palace. We just awesome. jammed out to Caravan Palace the other night. I know um, it was great, but like so, another one that might be a little bit different. It's a, the singer is very monotone, which is a different kind of uh, feel. It's very different, but it's another one Cake. that <laughs> yes, <laughs> you show me um, that. Yeah. So this is a song that like it's not so much the vocals that get you. It's how monotone he is about it, and how straightforward and just powerful it feels. Not like the way he sings it, but like the way he says it. It's all about the articulation. His word choice. As well as, yeah, the word choice. And it's the guitar part along with the bass behind it and the drums. Those are the main focuses of this one. That's what makes this one feel kind of badass feeling when you listen it? to it. Reluctantly crouched at the starting line. 
Engines What's it pumping called? and thumping the in time. The, the green light flashes the flag of the club. Churning and burning, they yearn for the cup. They definitely maneuver and muscle for rank. Fuel burning fast on an empty tank. Right. Reckless and wild, they pour through the There's another. Yeah. You can't hear the bass very well in it. It's a real fact that it's on the stage that you're speaking. I've got a, uh, maybe if I come on my, no, I've got a, I've got a, it's uh, uh, one more, uh, another monotone one, he's a rapper. As he can. He's a rapper, um, a uh, monotone, he's, if you listen, actually really listen, he's monotone. Um, Tyro the Creator. Mm -hmm. If you've ever heard him I'm rap, he rapped him. monotone. I'm Have you not heard him? A there is no him. inflection. I, I know. I don't it, like him. I he's, don't he's, like how he's crazy. He's got some crazy lyrics. I mean, he's good, but I don't. I like, like him. two. I like two songs by him. Yeah, I don't like a whole lot of stuff. But Yonkers and Martians vs. Goblins. That's it. That's those all are, I like. Those are the only two I've ever heard, and I don't like either of them. That's it. Have you guys heard Growing Pains? <laughs> this song is by who? Maybe. By um, is it by Alicia Cara. Okay. Alicia Cara? Oh yeah, it's Cara. probably gonna be good. I don't think so. Oh yeah, yeah, you have. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you have. Pretty sure you have. This is one of my favorite songs. I've heard it. Yeah. You're on your own, kid. You're on your own, kid. <laughs> She's good though. She's one of the new ones that's good. And her voice is just so crystal clear. Nothing like mm -hmm. she, it sounds like she there's not a note that she can't I'm hit. Have, I'm gonna have to do some research on it, but to be totally honest, a lot of the time when I hear a crystal clear voice, my first thought is there has to be something that they're tweaking to make it sound that way. I tweak my stuff, but not much. They're probably just cleaning up. It's like you, don't tweak, you tweak it in, you add reverb, you add things like that. You don't take your voice and change it. No, yes, yeah, like Echo Smith, that's tweak. all they do. That all they do is what he does, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. Echo yeah. Smith chain smokers of the same thing. Of, from what I can tell, a lot of the newer artists do a lot of... I'll admit, there's some that, are, that have real talent. Like, some uh, real talent. But there's a lot of them that use a lot yeah, of auto-tuning in their music. And it irritates me when they do that. But, alright, I got another question. Like, oh, okay. Okay. So, what kind of music do you listen to when you're pissed off? When I'm pissed off? Oh, ooh. That's easy. Dance, Gavin, dance. I knew you were going to say that. That's easy. Because you know, the screamo, they, he screams for me. I know, it's, a scream. it's just like, it's right where I want to be when I scream. Yeah. It's right where we I want to be. We own the night, man. Who oh. We own the night. And I don't have a big enough lung capacity to even attempt to hit that note as long as he does. I'm fucking okay. here. What the back? What the fuck? <laughs> Something. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, it's, it's like so, so hard. Okay, what do you listen to? Dude? Okay, uh, Evanescence. Yes. Teenage Grace. Yes. Uh, Skrillex, actually, yes. surprisingly. Um, I got one of Skrillex in a long Specifically, time. like Bangarang and Kill. Uh, Simple Kill Plan. Simple Plan. <clears throat> Me Against the World. It's like their one. Oh, I've heard that song. That's great. Uh, I think I've seen it. Specifically, Seven Nation good. Army. <laughs> yeah, that's um, good. Classic. And a little, I, I listen to some Eminem sometimes, but uh, 303. 303 is great, especially when you listen to which one is it? Um, I can do whatever I want. I can do I anything. I can do yeah. anything, anything. I have I that want. actually I here. I can do anything, anything I want. Yeah, right here. Oh, uh, I actually have Colors by Ice T. Really? Colors? Yeah, have you heard it? I don't think so. Yeah, here, okay, this Ice T, or it's Yo, Colors by Ice T. I really like it. You, have you seen tag? Okay. It's it's a scene in tag. Man, I feel like I'm about to put a cap in someone's like that. Exactly. <laughs> That's the point. Okay. This is when Ice T was a gangster though. Okay, so I'm gonna be very specific on this. There is one specific song that I listen to when I'm pissed off. It's by Aston Alexander. It yep. is my favorite, well, one of my favorite by them. Um, I'm going to real quick. My phone doesn't follow over. I click a bunch of things for me. Okay, it's Where Did It Go by Asking Alexander. Okay, I got a question for you guys after this one. And I love mm, every Flyleaf. lyric in the song. Yes, yes Flyleaf. 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 Cassie. So you're a star now, so you're a sand now, top of the world now. 
Still young the king, now the moon is on and I'm not done with it Still shit is like breathing, breathing for ten years And there's no limit on my every world of faded breath After a decade wishing boundaries but from possible, possible My things I do from nothing, creating larger than life Always rejecting the current, always ahead of the curve Praying the book is your favorite patch of both on the records This right here Fucking outrageous, I can't take it Motherfuckers more than a little complacent Where did it go? I love that one right there It's uh... So That's sit the fuck song. down, pay attention There's too much noise for a second lesson I love it so much It is like... That is like my soul music. So the song we were talking about earlier, um, Fall Out Boy, their new one, mm -hmm. one of their new ones, it's uh, Young and Menace. <laughs> oh, yes. This this one right here. Oh, and I have another I question. I so much, but I, I love it. I have another question for you guys, too. What song or what music gets you, um, when you're upset or something, get puts you in a good mood? Dirty Heads. That. <laughs> I just played it. <laughs> that one and th specifically the song Vultures by the same band and Under Denver. Those two. Do you guys listen to Dirty Heads? Little bit. Little bit. Little bit. Nope, I don't little think bit. I've heard, them I've heard of them. They're pretty popular. They're big. They're big. They're big in the 80s. Yeah. Okay. That's um, where I'll be. I like You that. guys already know. Come on, Snow Patrol. <laughs> I've listened to this song too many so times. Many. But it gets you right into a good mood. It does. It really does. I got another. It's um, I got one. Taylor Swift, actually. Really? Put, Swift. Yeah, puts me in a better mood. Um, Surprisingly, a lot of sad stuff weird. Which yeah, is weird, I guess that's, that's just me. What What is one song that absolutely breaks you down? Like, just makes you, like, I, it's super emotional. It's one of the songs by, I can't ever remember which one it is. It's one of the Ill Minds by Hobson. I think it's this one. Ilmine hops in seven. I'm gonna fast forward to where the lyrics begin so I can cover it. basic training um, Jared he, he wrote lyrics down in one of his letters um, and I, I reread that uh, I read those lyrics like three four times and every single time I read it, it just made me tear up you know um, I forgot the name of the song but I know uh, like the chorus part um, it's like it goes like this it's been a long time since the sun oh yeah, yeah I know what you're talking about um I read every memory as it goes it was uh, well, it was, it was really powerful if you saw uh, Fury Seven. Oh, yes. oh yeah, it's been a, it's been a long day without you, my friend. I'll tell you all about it when I see you. Again. See you again, Charlie Puth. That's what it is. Yes. It's been a long Charlie Puth. Charlie Puth is amazing. From where we began, it's the only song ever that brought me to tears. I'll tell you all about it when so, I see you again. Probably, um, I got two here. Yeah, and that song, like, I don't care who you are, if you know anything about the history of Fast and Furious and you went and saw that movie all the way to the end, oh, if yeah, you I'll didn't try. cry it in the end, if you didn't at least tear up, oh, and yeah. when that music, when that song started playing, 
You have no soul. <laughs> I you just don't. I literally don't cry for <laughs> anything. Like I don't cry. I know. I never and cry. I ever start. I tried ever. my hardest. And I was not straight cry. up like, like hyperventilating. Oh, yeah. Like in the <laughs> yeah. Because especially because like yeah. I don't cry for anything. I just don't. Especially because I was crying like, for that. I found out like the day before that he was dead. That he had yeah. yeah. Where it was like it was it was a couple weeks before. And then it came out and they played that. I'm like, oh, The really bad shit. thing for me was, like, I found out about it and everything just like normal. But then, like, right before we went and saw the movie, Lyric told me that um, before he died, he had told Vin... Because Vin Diesel was about to have a kid. Um, he told Vin Diesel that he was going to be an awesome dad. And then they didn't get to speak again. He died before they spoke again. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. At least I think that's what he said. They also... And, he like, also- I, that was, like, that hit me in that moment while I was watching that end piece as he drives away in the white super. That's, like, the embodiment of Fast and Furious 1 when he creates the uh, <clears throat> um, the orange super that he drives. Was it the super that. or the... It was the super. It was the super. Oh, yeah, because he, he gets the... I know it's a super. Because he gets the... Um, what is it? Because he gets the, the, Nis- the other Nissan. Yeah, he gets the R34. The, yeah, um, and in the, the next one. one. I think, yeah. yeah. But yeah. So I got yeah. two... Um, I mean, and it's like he pulls up in that Supra at the end of that movie. He pulls up in that Supra and it's like, it's so... Like, that hits you so hard that like... I mean, and it's a funny thing because it's a guy that... He was just another... For most actors, you don't ever have any... Because they die and it's like, oh, well, that's, I, I really liked him. He was, he did really good stuff. But like for him, for so many people, they had such an emotional bond to that movie. Like it was ridiculous how emotional Dude. people got over oh. Fast and Furious and over Paul Walker because of the fact that like, I mean, I know a lot of people who won't watch the new ones because of the fact that he died. They just don't want it. They won't I, do it. I the only reason he's the only reason, like they, they continue are, making oh them. We have making to sit them? down and watch all of them. It's oh, Paul Walker's, like seven of them, isn't there? One of, there's eight. eight. There's gonna eight? be nine. There's gonna be nine because Paul Walker's final wish was like that they made. See, and it's the like the last three. I believe I can't remember. I think when they said it, seven was <clears throat> for Paul and eight was by Paul. And nine Paul is helps write the, f- yeah. the eighth one. And nine is the finale. Is supposed to be the finale of the whole series. Mm, I don't think so. I think there's. Why would they end it at nine? It's an odd number. Because. because it doesn't really matter when they end it, but either way, it's a thing where um, I feel like if they went with nine, they would go with nine because of the fact that all the main points happen on the odd, on the on the threes, the variable three. So there's one, and then I can't Tokyo remember. Drift two. Yeah, Tokyo Drift. The Fast and the Furious, which is... I thought Tokyo Drift was Tokyo three. Drift, canonically, uh, chronologically, Tokyo Drift should be... Like number eight, or like number, number seven. Because it was... Um, it was right before... It was Han, it was right, it was... Han dies at the uh, spoiler alert. You've Han had plenty of years. Han dies at the end of Tokyo. <laughs> you, 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 have to watch, is you have to watch him die Furious 7. three fucking times. Yeah. Because you this see him die in 7. 3. He dies at the... No, it's the end of Furious 7 and the beginning of Furious 8. No, it's it's uh, or the end, end of 6. And, and end, end of 6, six beginning of 7. seven. You watch him die three times. And he's yeah. like one of my favorite. I I love Han, yeah. and he dies. He's, and he's I was so upset. And it's like a thing where because they put three or two, whichever one Tokyo Drift is. Yeah. I think, is it two? Tokyo Drift was the second one made. Okay, it's two. So because of the order of things, Han isn't actually introduced into the series <laughs> chronologically until f- four. Yeah, right? or it would be f- technically. It would technically, it would be the, because Paul Walker, or, um, yeah, he meets Han, Mm -hmm. and, because that's how he gets the uh, R34, and, um, it's, it's five, isn't it, no, it's not Fast Five, it's Fast Furious Four. He starts influencing people on three, and it's that's where he gets the R34 Mm -hmm. from when he races the Skyline, is, he gets the the Skyline. The influence starts happening in three. But you don't meet, he's not actually introduced into the storyline, into the actual, you don't meet him till four. Yes. And then he's actually a huge part of it starting in four, five, five, four, five and six. six. He's huge. And he dies at the end of six because you watch him die in three, he flips his RX-7, blows up. And then in six, it shows that he was T-boned. And the guy's like, all right, well, Dominic T-bone. Toretto, he's you T-bone. don't know me. He flipped. Yeah. Dominic Toretto, you don't know me, but you're about to. And then it explodes. 
And then the beginning of seven, they show up one more time because of the fact that in the opening scenes, and you're sitting here and they're at their house and there's the big package from Tokyo and they're like, oh, you have a package from Han. And they're sitting there and Dom gets, it, it shows the, the scene where he gets, from he gets uh, wrecked. Right. He, it shows that scene real fast. And then it cuts back to, um, uh, Dom to Dom getting, the, getting the phone call. And they have being like, Dominic Toretto, you don't know me, but you're about to. And, they and then he and like, he like looks at the thing and he's like, me get up. down and tackles me <laughs> off the stairs while Paul closes the minivan right, door yeah. and blows the, the package explodes, destroying half their house and launching Paul into the window so hard that he shatters the minivan yeah. window. He, he, he puts this massive... Yeah, he, like, like, shatters it. It doesn't like, break here, it. Like, the explosion's he happening. Screen. As he shuts it, he, it clicks, and then the blast hits him, and he just slams his chest right in face front of his it. kid. Right in front of his kid. Just closed the door before the explosion went off, with his kid sitting right inside the yeah. van, and just gets smashed up against the opinion, window. Totally shatters the whole windshield. In my opinion, Fury 7, definitely one of the best, because it's, oh it's got some of the Seven best... It's got awesome. one of the best... It's got one of the best plots. It's, plot it's got the points. biggest squaw plot, along with the most um, dramatic tension on the end has um, the most emotional two points yes. in the series. I'm yes. going to bring us back towards the music Sorry, department. Yes. We got off a um, little bit. So we were, um, <laughs> we were talking about what songs? We were talking about songs that... Um, I, I got a good question, actually. Okay. Yeah, we'll uh, start, yeah. So what kind of equipment do you use uh, to listen to music? And uh, how much are you willing to spend on good sound quality? Um, up until, like, I, I typically, my, my favorites are the, um, Skullcandy Hesh 2s. The ones that's, that you just got. Yeah, the ones that I just bought another pair. This is my fourth pair that I've had. Um, for some reason right now, they're $75. I don't know what to do with that is, but they're a little bit different. They're not, I don't like them quite as much. They've got the same sound quality, same everything, but they don't look quite as nice, just because of the fact that they changed up where the charging port is and where the headphone jack is. So originally, the headphone jack was the very bottom-most plug-in that you plugged into, and it was rounded off to where it was kind of hard to find, but it looked nice and sleek because the plug-in itself was rounded with the outside of the curve, so you didn't notice it from a distance. Now it's got like a square blocky cutout for it, and it's kind of annoying. I don't like it. As well as they moved the charging port from it used to be to where when you hold the headphones, you had to bend them inwards, and one of them had the charging port underneath of the actual See, like, headband piece. The, the ones that bend inwards. I hate them. They fold up. They're no. Folding? No. No, they don't fold. They're not folding. The headpieces bend. Like, they just... Oh. So here, how they, like, flex back and forth when you yeah. just move the earpieces in? You used to have to push them in, and they were on top of the earplugs, the earmuffs right here. They were on the very top of the left one, and that's where they plugged in, and there was a little red light that would kick on and flash blue when it got fully charged. Now... It's on the bottom right next to the headphone jack, which they're Bluetooth or wired. And so that makes nice. you can unplug it, plug them back in. It also means that if you mess up your cord, you can get a new one. But plugs in there, and then your charging cord's right next to that, which is kind of handier. It's a little bit easier to use, but it doesn't look as nice. I don't. It's not as fancy, and I like the fancy look that they had originally because they were so sleek. And the only buttons is the power button, which has a, a circular band around it that blinks blue when it's on blinks purple, it like flashes purple when you turn it off, um, as well as when you turn it on and when it goes into parry mode, it flashes purple and then um, blinks purple. And then when you when it's dying, it flashes between blue and red, um, telling you that it's dying. So. How much money would you be willing to spend on a good sound quality? It, it, it could either be speakers or headphones. Oh man, honestly, if, if you go with, with headphones, I don't want to spend more than 150 bucks. You can get perfectly good. I I rock. I rock a pair of uproars, and they're perfectly good uh, sound quality. And I got them for 40 bucks. I was gonna say like 45, 49, somewhere right around there. Yeah, That's and price uh, of those. we were talking earlier about this. Um, I remember it's the Up Rock Twos. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. the new. They're the new top of the line ones. But instead of headphones, let's let's change it over to like microphones. But like. Well, Blue going back to speakers real quick, <laughs> you going back to speakers, mm -hmm. if I'm, it depends on where I put it. If it's a home system, I'm looking at spending somewhere around $500 on a good system because I like my music and I like a lot of bass to my music, which means subs, subs are expensive, especially when you have a powered sub. If it's a sub that you just plug into your system, typically not super expensive. You can spend around $200 for one of those that just runs off of normal size speakers. You can get a Sony set for around 200 
works perfectly fine, does really well, sounds really good. If you're gonna go the extra mile and you're gonna have a full surround sound, which is what the other piece is, but if you're gonna have a powered sub, it costs closer to around four or five hundred dollars for just the head unit. You're thinking 300-ish, if you're going with a Bluetooth system, you're thinking about 500-ish. And so, if you're looking at a good, good, good system that you wanna get, 500 for the head unit, about $50 a speaker, 120 for your sub, is about what I'm looking at spending. So, about five speakers, you got your center, your right, your left, your surround left and right, and then your sub, you're looking at about six speakers. So, five speakers, normal speakers, $50 each, somewhere around, I don't know, what is that? What's that math? I can't. You got what, what? do you got? Four? Do you say four, five, five? Five, five for for forty. Okay. Or five for fifty dollars each. So that's that's, that's two hundred fifty plus the the five hundred for the sound system. Yeah, you went about you about, you about so closer to upwards of a, a around eight hundred dollars. Yeah, eight hundred around eight hundred for the full setup. If it's going in my car, um, I'd be looking at. I don't really dick with the front speakers. I don't mess with those. Those I typically shut down far enough that it doesn't matter. Um, I don't mess with tweeters. I think they're annoying. They hurt my head. I don't ever build a system that needs tweeters, so I don't spend any money on that. I mainly do the rear speakers, which, good set, I'm looking at about $220, and then a subsystem for another 800 or so. So I'm looking at another grand for a car system. And if I'm going to go with a sub, brand-wise, um, speakers, I don't really care. Sony do just fine for me. Um, as long as I got some bass and they're good quality four-channel speakers, I'm probably fine with them. But for a sub, I typically go with either JBL or JL Audio. JBL. JL is good too. JL and JBL is probably the only ones you need. Mm -hmm. I don't have any experience with uh, JLs. And if you're going, I typically would do something larger for my system. Like I would go with either a pair of 12s from J, JL Audio um, with their 12 or their 2000 watt amp is what I would push. That's That would be my favorite setup which would be pushing more $1,200 just for that. Um, depending on what speakers I went with, if I went with just normal 12 inches, the base model you're looking at at about $120 a speaker, plus another grand for the um, the 2000 watt amplifier that can push up to a pair of 16s, which are huge. Um, they're 16 D4s, I wanna believe, is about what that can push. And so then you're spending another 350 per speaker or so. Is it pretty much uh, what you pay for is what you get? Yes, it's very much what you pay for is what you get, except when you're looking at things like Pioneer. I think personally Pioneer is a good, nice, cheap sound system to go with, but I think they charge more than they should for their higher quality stuff. Um, same with JBL to a point, a lot of their higher quality stuff, depending, it, there's like a gap. There's a spot that you just don't purchase. There's an area um, right in their like $600 range that they're not that much better than their $350 speakers. They're just more compact. And so it's a cool idea. It's really nice to have nice, small, compact speakers. But if you're going for max sound, you want bigger speakers. They're going to work better. They're going to hit faster. Um, unless you're putting them in a truck or something, then it's kind of nice to go with their little, I forget what they're called. They're, it's a specific kind of speaker that they do, and they're like $450 a pair for 12s. And so you get... For eight or nine hundred dollars, you're spending for two speakers, um, and they're just twelve or ten inch. I can't remember which ones those are, um, and they're not super high wattage. They're good wattage for how small they are. They're like little bitty compact things. They're they would fit underneath the seat of almost any truck or behind the seat of any truck anywhere. There's nowhere that these things would not fit, and they don't need much for space. So. When it comes to my speaker systems, I very much know what I want, very much know what I like, and know how much I'm going to spend on everything. All I have to recommend is do your research. Hardcore. I suggest JBL or JL Audio just because that's what I have experience with. I know those two brands, and I can work with those two brands. I know what I'm pricing at. Because I've messed up. I've bought the wrong things and looked at them and been like, what the hell did I just spend that money on? It was the same thing as the cheaper one. Just like Beats. Just a little bit bigger. Yeah, beats it's like are just Beats. A rip -off. I, beats skull I cannot from. stand Beats because of the fact that they sit there, they charge like $350 for something that sounds just as good as my hash tapes. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had a pair of Red Beats. Uh, actually, they lasted. And I paid $75 for my hash tubes two days ago. Mm -hmm. Or I could have spent 250 on something that was smaller, hurt my head, 
and has personally, everybody says they have so much bass, and I don't understand that because really they have so much trouble that it actually hurts my head to listen to. I don't enjoy any of them except for the studio beats. But the that studio their studio beats, beats are good. Their studio are headphones. awesome. Their studio headphones, exactly. They're not. They're, they're not meant for just hanging out listening to music. They're exactly. meant for what we're doing. I mean, and like if you're making so. a business out of it and you get sponsored by Beats, hell yeah, go for it. Those are awesome headphones, but. For three hundred and some dollars, they're not what I'm gonna go for. They're like, mm. they're not that much better than the Hash Twos, which suit me perfectly fine. They come with a mic. They're wireless, so I can use them wireless. And I don't even know if the Beat Studios are wireless. I think they're wired only, and they're like three hundred fifty dollars. Exactly. There, there are studio wireless, but but they're not as they, good. they're they're having issues with them. Yeah, <laughs> there's some I mean, issues. Um, so a price of Beats is a no go. I will yeah. never ever yeah. pair it, buy a pair of Beats. I had as well. I had a pair of red ones. Sorry. Uh, it's uh, 12 o'clock, guys. So okay. Okay. we've been doing this for almost an hour now. Yeah, we're going to wrap it up. Um, this is going to be our f- first podcast going out on YouTube. Yeah, Saturday probably number right. two will be next Saturday. Next Saturday. What day, though? Let me look it up real quick so that people know um, when they watch this what next day to tune in to us. So today... Um, the day that this is uploaded, hopefully, will be the 25th. September the 1st. The next will be September 1st, yes. Yeah. Which, hopefully, we will have House Prisoner ready as well as Retro ready on that day as well. Um, also, yeah, uh, tonight... Well, no, probably not tonight because I want to do some uh, um, some advanced editing with it. Uh, I want to get uh, these eyes up, and which we did rename that instrumental mm-hmm. um, to... Didn't we do Wisdom or Yeah, it, it was Wisdom. Okay. And it's yep. pretty much just like a guitar track. It's just a cool little instrumental that, to be honest, we sat here and we rapped some lyrics to last night and had a blast doing it. We don't we don't typically rap, but it was fun. We enjoyed it. Um, we came up with some cool lyrics for some songs later on. Um, I'm definitely going to go through what I recorded and uh, transpire a lot of those things so that we transpose them so that we can look at the lyrics and have them for mm-hmm. later projects. That way we have something to go off of. Um, and so it's it's something that's fun. You can just rap to it. You can do whatever. You can just listen to it. It's a nice little beat. Um, and it's surprisingly good for rapping. When I first listened to it, I was thinking, you know, this would sound good if it had something fast, some fast, quick rapping on it. And it'd be cool. I would honestly like it um, if we could see some people out there doing covers on it with their own lyrics. That would be awesome if I could see that would it, be. It, one of my songs is someone I can do a cover over. That would be cool. It's like, yeah. I'm glad you appreciate my music. Exactly. I mean, and it's like, it's it's one that I didn't do a whole lot. I didn't, I don't think I helped at all with that one, actually. I think that one was all Alec. Yeah, um, I spent like a good 10 hours on it. It's, you're ridiculous, man. But, um, so it's, it's his, it's his little baby that he's putting up on there for you to... I'm really tempted. I don't want to say that. Never mind. Um, <laughs> anyways, it's it's his baby. He put it up there for you to use. You can do what you want with it. I have any. Um, I have covers would be awesome, awesome to hear, mm-hmm. just because we want to see what you guys think of it and what you guys can create from it. Any inspiration is inspiration. We love feedback. Give us what you know and have an it, awesome rest of your day. If you're gonna use any of uh, our our sounds um email us email us at uh, simple stride music at gmail.com uh let us know before you use it and we would more than happy to let you mm-hmm. yeah but we you... can send you just the straight audio files a lot of the time um if we still have them so what did you uh are, are we still working on that song what song the we were writing the lyrics for it we were at belgium like, oh yes minutes. the fantasy song yes um, it, about dragons and villagers. Have yeah. you heard it yet? No. You haven't? Oh, oh my god. god. Let me yeah, blow my guitar uh, really quick. Oh my god. I don't know if I want to. Where are the lyrics for it? Oh no. They're right behind me. me. Are they? Oh, oh. no. This. Yeah. I don't know if I want to hear this. This is a great it's, song. It's, we got a, sure so we got a verse and a chorus and two. Did we get two verses down? Your face said otherwise when you were announcing it. He just forgot. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't well, know when when he was when he was saying what it was about. His face told me everything I can find. Oh, it's because it's song. new. It's, it's different. He yeah, yeah, yeah. had a look of like this is stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's something fun that or dark. This is a dark preview. 
dark or fun? I mean, it's me. <laughs> it can be both. I, know, it's you. <laughs> I did help write this. I physically wrote it. <laughs> He's just started writing this out. Now we can't wish him the song for this. We just started randomly just singing. <clears throat> and we came up with it from there. And then it goes, uh, When our fire screams and the people shout, the fences fill the air. The beast wakes up in the mountain tops and no one is aware. So, and then the second so verse good. is gonna be like When the people run and scream and shout the monks tell in their hands They're fighting for their lives because the night is in their stand The villagers grab their weapons, find themselves in steel The fight goes on through the night, the dragon is a hill The night goes in And the fire That's actually really enjoyable. I liked that way more than I thought I was going to. Ah, see? Totally. Like, I'm not gonna lie. That, that was, was, bad that was much was. better than I thought it was gonna be. That was. I thought I was gonna cringe the whole time, but I really like how you ended up doing it. It's really. Uh, we went for a, a folksy. I don't know, like a, a, a very much like we took inspiration kind of from the Hobbit. Right, dude, it's late night. And she's trying to sleep. Oh yeah. From the Hobbit, kinda. The dragon. Yeah, yeah. Right. We totally yeah, yeah, yeah. We took the thrush for Smout. And he's but finished. But it's, it's that, a project that's, that's I want to. I, I can't promise you when it's gonna be out, but it's a new project that I want to record. Yeah. There's something completely different from any other of my songs. That's uh, that's just a little preview for when, whatever we have in store later. Yeah, I guess whenever we get it. It might change, we don't know. It might uh might be a little different. Alright guys, we're I'm gonna end this podcast. Thanks for uh, thank you all for listening. And um stick tuned to next Saturday um for another podcast. So this one's gonna be released um like Darian said on the whatever date. September first this so one's gonna be stay on, tuned. hopefully this will be released on the 25th and the next one should be released on the first yeah these are gonna so, be super easy to release we'll see you guys then so. we'll look forward to hearing from all us. right peace guys all right later <laughs>